Okay, so as some of you know, um, so it's been a, it it will it's it's been three years since I left the Air Force last week, I think, um, <clears throat> and um, and I and I'm kind of like reflecting on the past three years and um, the growth from there because um, as I've said before, even though it's been like three years as a veteran, I've kind of realized that there's probably never going to be a time that I am done adjusting to civilian life. Um, like literally, like probably for as long as I live. <laughs> and, um, and, um, I, um, I'm, well, I'm, 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 ma I'm making this video for, um, a friend of mine who is also getting out, uh, of the air force. I told him I'd, I'd make one, um, one of my old airmen. So, my dude, this is for you. I love you. Um, so, <laughs> one thing, so, <clears throat> one thing, like, one thing to know overall, if you're about to get out of the military, is that you are not normal. <laughs> accept that right now, and accept the fact that you will probably always be adjusting like have that realistic expectation because I feel like they don't give us realistic expectations for the outside world they tell us all the time about how the job that we're in at the moment can transfer so well to the outside world you know some more than others but like and even if it does that's 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 just the tip of the iceberg the whole thing is that you don't know how to act you don't know how to function in the real world. Like, think about it. Less than 1% of Americans join the United States military. Less than 1%. You're going out there. You've basically been raised in a cult. I know a lot of people don't like to see it that way, but it basically you've been raised in a cult, in a commune, <laughs> where we've all been wearing the same fucking things and, and, and adapted all of this fucking behavior of, like, ranks and structure and even like little things like, you know, having to stop and salute the flag or stand at attention for taps and shit like that. We have been conditioned into behaviors that are just not normal, um, period. And literally more than 99% of the rest of the country will not un ever understand what it's like to be in, th in that. Um, you need to get therapy, <laughs> no matter who you are, no matter what your medical status is getting out, you really should, you really do need to get therapy <clears throat> because, um, it would, it was at a very low point for me last year where I went to see a, a psychiatrist and, um, and she was basically like, uh, and I was telling her about some some stuff, some traumatic things that have gone on, and 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 why I was like very just very low, and she was like, "Oh, you have no concept of self worth," and I was like, "That does not sound like me. <laughs> that doesn't sound like me because like I'm literally like one of the most confident, like outgoing people I know. I feel like I I I feel like I do." She was like, "No, you have no concept of self worth." Ever since you were young, because I had a very traumatic childhood as well, she's like, ever since you were young, you've been going, going, going. Your worth has been determined by how productive you could be, by um, what you could do for other people, how you can make other people feel, how you can help them. Like, even as a performer, as a performer, everything that I do, like, like I'm starting to you know, try to make sure that everything I do now is for fun, but it is to entertain other people. And she was like, you know, you've been like, you're forced to grow up very early, like when you're 11 years old, you know, <clears throat> and um, you, you based your self-worth off of like, you know, being an AP scholar, like being able to get into hard schools like the Air Force Academy, which I did. And then you went to the Air Force Academy where your worth is measured on where you rank, you know, your ability to just do a bunch of things, <clears throat> do more than what is healthy for the human brain to do by the way um and then you and then you went into full active duty and then all this traumatic shit happened to you you have no you have no concept of self-worth 
without your ability to do things, you don't see any worth in yourself. And that was a turning point because it was like two years at that point that I had been out of the military and never had that fucking crossed my mind. But it's true. Like most of us that joined the military joined at like 17, 18 as children. I don't care it, what the legal age is. Like you're a child. Your, your brain doesn't stop developing until like your mid 20s. So you're still a fucking child. This is it's like the height of our fucking formative years as a young as a young adult. Um, <clears throat> and and they've drilled they've drilled it into us that our worth is determined by our rank, you know, um, how much people like us uh, and our ability to get stuff done. Um, all of that on top of from the, from day one conditioning us to get used to the idea of our own death every single day. Like we had to come to terms with the idea of us dying today, next week, whatever. Even if we weren't in like a dangerous, like deployed location or anything, we were conditioned to be ready for that, you know? And I, I know I, I, I spoke about that to, you know, a friend of mine who was getting out of the military and he's like, I never thought about that. I never thought about that, but it's fucking true. Like, that's not normal. That's not normal. And there's a whole bunch of groups of, sh of, of children around the world and in our country that, you know, do have to, you know. And then, like, add on to that if you grew up in, you know, in a dangerous environment or dangerous neighborhood where you had to get used to the idea of your mortality as an adolescent anyway. Bro, trauma on trauma on trauma. And they made us, be like, we went to the military, they drilled this into us, and they made us believe that that's normal. And it is not normal. It's fucking traumatic. And <clears throat> it is, I think, very a very safe assumption when you get out of the military to assume that you have no concept of self-worth <laughs> and to go see a therapist and work that shit out. Because that shit can lead very quickly to depression and wanting to quit. And people wonder why the fuck like suicide rates for veterans keep on going up they prepare us for one week like now like they used to not prepare us at all but then president obama in, uh, instituted the taps program which is basically like they spend a fucking week and by week i may i mean a work week so five days um teaching us trying to get us ready for the outside world and it's kind of shit. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's the fucking stupidest thing ever. Because it's basically like, here's a credit score and kind of how it works. Here is kind of how you write uh, a resume. This is what business casual looks like because none of you fuckers know how to dress normally or properly <laughs> for anything. Because surprise, surprise, you've been wearing the same things for God knows how long. Or however long you've been fucking been fucking in you know what i mean and then they're just like good luck that's not enough that is not enough speaking from my experience i went to the air force academy for four years and then i was active duty for five years that's nine years that's nine years of conditioning think about how long you've been in even if it's less than that it's still a long time and it really doesn't, and, it, and honestly, it's probably still just as crazy because, like I said, this happened in the formative years of our young adulthood, when our, <clears throat> like, when our brain is, like, really starting to, like, cement things in. And so there are so, there are so many harmful behaviors that only work under duress, living in a life, living in a life that is, like, like under duress in the military like it only works there you come out here in the outside world it doesn't <clears throat> you know you are going to you're going to have anxiety about like regardless if you're diagnosed or not you're going to have anxiety about the sh the weirdest fucking things or they're going to be weird to other people um which probably means that it is fucking weird because like i said we are not the majority you're going to find that things don't run as smoothly in the civilian world and you're going to get frustrated. 
You're going to find that the way you talk to people, the way you talk to people in the, in, in the armed forces, you can't talk to them out here. You know, you, <laughs> you cannot talk to them that way out here. Social skills, social skills alone, we ain't got it. We ain't got it. Assume you ain't got it. Even the smartest motherfucker out there, you just, you don't have the social skills. You don't have it. Um, <laughs> I remember I was late to, I was late to work for like 10 minutes because I like caught the wrong bus or something out here in New York. And I had a full on panic attack. I thought my life was over. I was like, oh my God, I better pack it the fuck up. I just put on all this money on an apartment. I thought it was the end of the fucking world. And those of you watching this that are not military can basically get, probably guess that I got in and everyone was like, what are you, why are you freaking out? Because where I came from in the environment I came out of, and especially going through some very toxic, very hostile environments, um, and some discriminatory things, which still happen on the outside, by the way, <laughs> that doesn't change. Um, like that sort of thing could get me paperwork that, that would ruin my entire life. You know, especially, especially if there's someone out to get you, especially if you're a person of color, like, you, you know, that could ruin my entire fucking life. And it didn't matter. It didn't fucking matter. I'm a neat freak. All years of years of just years of room inspections, um, and high stakes room inspections. By the way, because at the Air Force Academy, you can fail for fucking anything, anything. Maybe not one room inspection, but a few failures of just failing to dust properly can lead to a slippery slope of things that literally gets you kicked the fuck out. So everything, even something as insignificant as cleaning, is high stakes. I didn't know that that was not normal or a kind of form of light trauma until I went to therapy. Until I went to therapy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's not normal? No, bitch, that's not fucking normal. <clears throat> There is a lot. There's a lot. Expect to be going through, you know, these changes and this adjustment for maybe the rest of your life, but at least the next few years. And compounded for me, like, I have complex PTSD. Complex. So I'm going to be in intensive therapy for a very long time. Um, but definitely be patient with yourself. Do expect things to be disorienting. Um, and I highly suggest that you seek out therapy as quickly as possible. I also say you better file a fucking VA claim. A lot of, uh, a lot of veterans feel really guilty about filing uh, VA claims for disability because they feel like they don't deserve it. They feel like if they got hurt on the job, it's just because they were doing their job and they don't need to be compensated for it. And I will venture to say that is a fucking gaslighting, bro. Uh, they required so much more than a hum so much more of us than a human being should have to give. Um, and and please remember that even if you weren't a combat veteran, the ultimate purpose of your body is to possibly be disposable and then replaced with another body. You're cannon fodder. You're a cannon fodder with a nice suit. You're a cannon fodder with a lot of decorations and awards and attaboys to keep on making you feel good so you could continue to stay in long enough for you to be cannon fodder if they needed you. Remember that. Remember, at the end of the day, whether you are liberal or conservative, <clears throat> at the end of the day, the purpose of us being there is to be bodies to fight the wars that rich people will not do themselves. So, squeeze as many fucking dollars out of the United States government as you can. Recognize that what you went through is a little traumatic. It's, if, <laughs> at the very least, it is some form of trauma. It is very abnormal. 
it definitely fucks with your worldview. You are going to have to, regardless of how jacked up you are, you are going to have to adapt to a whole new way of living that they did not, they will not, they did not prepare you adequately for. So you better squeeze as many doll hairs out of them bitches as possible. Let this be your pep talk. File for VA disability. You can file for VA disability as early as six months out from your separation date. If you're really fucked up, please, at, by all means, try to get a medical retirement or separation so you can not have to fight for getting a, a check every month for the rest of your life. I had to fight for it for two years to basically get equivalent of 100% disabled. I had to fight for two fucking years. <clears throat> but please, by all means, apply for disability. You earned it. And don't let anyone make you feel bad about collecting that fucking check. You gave your life for this raggedy ass <laughs> country. <laughs> And you don't have to die to give your life for your country. You literally did. I wore United States Air Force on my fucking chest for nine years. I gave my body and my fucking life and the life of, like, my family life to the service of my fucking country. Like, it... You earned it. Get that fucking disability. Six months out. Take... Give them every single medical record you have. If you have a splinter, give it to them. Upload that shit. If you have a blister, if you get pink eye, you upload that shit. Because they want nothing more than to not give you money. You give them every piece of information, every way in which you were broken, no matter how small. You fucking give it to them. Fucking give it to them. Get that shit. Okay? And again, let me just say that, like, no matter how well prepared you are, you will still have to do adjusting. <clears throat> and I had a very good last commander who basically gave me six months off. He was like, he took away all my duties at six months he basically, like, all I had to do was sit at the front of the squadron and, like, let people in, basically. And he was like, your only job is to find an apartment and find a job. I, Because I want you set up well for life, and I don't want to see you working at the fast food restaurant <laughs> down the street, you know, down uh, out in town after this. Um, not everybody is going to have that opportunity that I had. If you're a commander watching this, you're literally a shit commander if you don't do that for anyone that's getting out of the military. Um, period. You're a shit. You're, you're, a piece, you're a piece of shit commander. Like, figure it out. Um, <laughs> but it, but like nobody, not everybody is, is that fortunate. Um, and even though I was fortunate enough to just literally go straight from hanging up my uniform to my next job the next day, the adjustment, it never ends. Because as you can see, I am PTSD disabled and I cannot work a traditional job anymore because of my time in the Air Force. So, so my God, keep that in mind. Please get therapy Recognize that you're going to have to build the entire, your entire view of yourself over from scratch. You have to find, you, you, you have, you have to find worth and joy in living when you don't have to do anything for anybody else. And when nobody is standing over your shoulder to the extent that the military did, <clears throat> telling you what to do and telling you why you're important. That is something that you're going to have to learn to figure out for yourself. And let me tell you, it's fucking hard. And I thought I was confident. I thought I was confident. And then my self-esteem plummeted to the point where I was like, it was just very bad. And I was just flabbergasted as to why. And then I figured out, I was told. And, and, and I agreed that I had no concept of self-worth. 
It's getting better. It is getting better. It, but it's still a struggle. I'm in a very, I'm in a pretty fucking good place. And it's still a struggle for me every single day. <clears throat> and I even have to try and I even have to separate myself from this, like from the importance of <laughs> this social media shit that I do. I have to separate myself from that as often as possible and be like, okay, Nikki, but you have worth when you're not posting. You have worth when you're not creating. You have worth when your views aren't great. You have worth. I have to keep on reminding myself that. And I'm sure like a lot of people have to go through that. But if you were in the military, it's probably going to be like, in, like monumentally worse for you to grasp that concept. Um, try to get into dialectical behavioral therapy. Um, your VA might offer it. It's basically like it's it's a treatment for people with borderline personality disorder and complex PTSD like myself and I go through it and um it's very essential for me because I'm a I'm a sad bitch <laughs> and I I feel like I I I stay in DBT therapy just to keep the machine oiled um cuz I just don't want to go back to a dark place again and um it's been working pretty well but I highly suggest doing DBT therapy. I could do a whole nother video about how DBT therapy has helped and I probably will later on. Um, but it's basically adulting 101. It's life skills and <clears throat> like behavioral and emotional skills that that really should be taught to everyone. It's just that people that are mentally ill, we need it because all it takes is one day. <laughs> all it takes is one bad day for us to be like, you know what, sayonara, I can't do this anymore. Um, but no matter, but if you're able, I would highly suggest trying to get into a DBT group. Um, they go through things like emotional regulation, managing your symptoms. If you have, if you do have a, a disorder, um, what else? Um, there's even there's even stuff on like spirituality, um, and um, which which is. Also, it, it is it is a good block. It's still a good block for people that are not religious. Um, it, it, it is. Trust, just trust me. Just trust me, okay? Um, <laughs> it, it, they, hit, like, they hit like certain aspects of just behavior and just like approaching the world and approaching problems um, in a way that like people like me that have problems regulating emotions and I have like a panic disorder and I have, I have panic attacks that just come up out of nowhere. Um, I, I need to have those skills like literally at the forefront of my mind all the time for me to, you know, um, engage <clears throat> just like, you know, operate in the world with my, with my disorder to the best of my ability. Um, but it really is really fucking um, useful because another thing that they didn't teach us in the military really is how to regulate our emotions. We were taught to suppress them and ignore them and to not show the ones that would impact mission readiness. Um but they never taught us how to regulate it. And so because of that, a lot of us think that emotions are bad. And we think that the way that we dealt with them in a high stress environment is the same way we can continue to do that in the real world and still maintain meaningful relationships. And let me tell you, we can't, we can't, <laughs> we cannot, <clears throat> we cannot. Um, Anger management is another block. Anger management is another block in DBT therapy. Um, and so, yeah, those are just, those are my tips. Like I said, assume that you have no, you have no concept of self-worth. <laughs> and get into therapy immediately. Because you really do want a third party, a, a professional, to like help you with your specific problems and the specific things that you went through in the military. Um, make sure you apply for VA disability, period. You earned it. Try to get into DBT therapy, um, if you can. And also just acknowledge that it's going to take, a it's going to take a while and the adjustment period 
will probably be forever. And that's the price that we have to pay. Um, and it's not fair, but it is what it is. Um, and, <clears throat> and that is something that they don't, they don't tell us, but like, why would they, they spend so much time, you know, conditioning us to be what they wanted us to be. And once we had, and once the clock started running out on our time in our usefulness, it, that was a clock on our usefulness to them. And so they didn't care. They cared about making us into the weapons that they needed us to be. But once our utility is has decreased, they don't they don't care what happens to us when we get out there. They don't care. That's the that's the fucking truth. They don't care what happens to us when we get out there. That's why veterans keep on fucking alive unaliving themselves. Because we continue to be to be put in some pretty fucking dire situations because as much as the government was completely willing to use our bodies and lives and skills for all the time that we wore the uniform, they are completely willing to let us die when we're not doing shit for them anymore. Concept of self-worth. <clears throat> because they're not giving us our self-worth anymore. They were giving us they were giving us our sense of worth. They told us you are special because you're wearing the uniform. You're better than all these buffoons out here, America. The, all, all these other Americans out here, right? They told us that, right? Right? They said, you're better. You are so much better than them because you're in the Air Force, because you're in the Army. You are elite. You are this, this, and that. And by doing that, they made us attach so much worth to that fucking uniform. So much worth to that ugly <laughs> that fucking uniform that as long as you have United States Air Force, United States Army, whatever, Marine Corps, whatever on there, that you have worth and you have a purpose in this world. They made us attach so much worth to that. To the point that once we got to a point where we weren't wearing that anymore, we don't know where our worth is because it it went into it went into the closet when you hung up that fucking uniform that you really can't wear anymore willy nilly out here they were giving us our worth we weren't finding it ourselves they were giving it to us and then they snatch it back that's very dangerous it's very 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 fucking dangerous nobody's worth should ever be reliant on their utility to a system, to a government, to a person. It just shouldn't. It shouldn't. <clears throat> and the damage that the military does in that aspect is so fucking great. It's probably, it probably might be one of the worst. You know, making us codependent as fuck. <laughs> codependent as fuck. I hope what I'm saying is reaching you if you're on your way out. It's probably really hard to understand it when you're like still kind of like in and you're still in this weird in-between place where like, you know, you're on your way out, but you're not out all the way and you're just kind of coming to grips and coming to terms with the fact that the clock is running out. I think the biggest thing I can tell you is that you need like you have self-worth you have worth outside of that fucking uniform you have to remember that you have worth outside of that fucking uniform but you like there's a 99 percent chance that you have no concept of what that worth is and you have to find it it has to be the first thing on your list of things to fucking do when you get out so I'm about to hit 30 minutes <laughs> um, and that's a long video, but I really want to get all this information out um, and all these feelings out and uh, to my homeboy for whom I made this video mostly um, as, 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 as well as all the other veterans that might be watching or soon to be veterans. I love you so much um, and you can do it. You can do it. It's going to be all right. It can be all right. Might be, maybe not be the best, but it can be all right.